let's look at the education sector and the issues arising from that report and earlier stories we brought you. We're joined now by Chairman, Academic Staff Union of Universities, Professor Emmanuel Sodeke. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Prof, you can hear me, um, I want to start by asking, how would you respond to this news that Nigerian lawmakers are pushing for the establishment of 32 new federal universities amidst call for proper funding of the existing ones? Well, thank you very much for this. And uh, Nigerians should know that all that you are seeing they're doing are just for selfish reason, because you already have enough university that you are not funding, that we'll be having crisis in the past 20 years of about funding. And as are presently, you have about 52 federal universities and you cannot fund them. And you try to establish another 30, some, about 30 new universities. You know what we, we term the constituency project universities? Because they, they are just established for self-ego, established to be put in your own community. That's all. Would these people allow their children? Would they sign an agreement that one of these universities are established that children will attend these universities? That is the question Nigerians should ask them. In the old good old days, before universities are established, the federal government set up a commission, the Elliott Commission, to look at how, where do we put this university? How are we funding it? How are we going to get staff recruitment? Those were the things you have to answer before you can start a university. But today, because it's very the easiest thing, the easier bill to write today is, uh, is uh, the bill on uh, establishment of university and polytechnic. And that's why you are having them. They don't want to do meaningful things that will give jobs to Nigerians, that will enable us to produce fuel for our people. They are not interested in those ones because you just copy another one and change the name, it becomes your bill. And you go home and say, we have, a, we have I'm presented a bill. The, these Nigerians are elected, um, a prof, these are elected officials. ASU is a body as well. Is there something that ASU can do to educate these lawmakers on the most uh, likely um, impact or the dangers, let's, let's put it that way, of having too many ill-equipped higher institutions of learning? We have done that over and over and over again. As I speak to you, so, University of Lagos, First generation university only get about 15 million naira a month to run. That is what the federal government gives to them to run the university overhead cost. And because they said there is no fund. How can you have such a situation? How can we say this bad? For eight months last year, the university was shut down because they also want a better funding system. And then instead of solving these problems, we are trying to establish 30, 32 more universities for political education. Where will the funding come from? You can't fund the one you have. Why are you talking about a new one? Let's talk about something else that, that uh, attention has been drawn to. And uh, that's something that was also highlighted in one of the reports. Brain drain. There is a lot of talk Good. about lecturers um, leaving the country to look for greener pastures. A couple of issues have been um, um, attributed to this. How can we, or what? steps does ASU recommend uh, to address the issue of brain drain? You see, this similar thing happened in the early 1990, 1992, and ASU also went on strike and forced the government to sign an agreement that will enable the university's lecturer a salary that is at least competitive to West Africa, so that we don't start running away. And then the government then signed and that brain drain to cease. And then extended the age of retirement for lecturers, professor to 70 years to another a number of them stay behind. Those were the ideas of ASU in the, in the early 90s, late 80s and early 90s, and it worked. Now, the most critical one today is that the way lecturers have been treated in the past eight years, the past regime, the way lecturers were treated, no work, no pay, treated as casual workers, is one of the major factors that is leading to what we have today. You see, and I want to praise the Punch newspaper for taking time to go around all the universities to sample what is happening, and they have come out with the report. I also expect our print media, our, 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 our media to do the similar thing. Nigeria is in crisis, and I expect this regime to sit down with us and sort out all the past problems and see how we can entice our members, those who have lived, left, to come back home. 
As I speak to you, some will tell you we can recruit. As I speak to you so today, you have four categories of lecturers in universities, as we have today, the private, the state, and some federal universities. The first category, those who want to lecture, no matter how you treat them, they want to lecture. The second category are those who left because they didn't want to do their good certificate, everything, but later on they came back. Then you have a two-cell, who didn't want to lecture, but we're forced into this, then you go for that reason, and go for that reason, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, what do you call it? A favoritism, and a purchase of appointment. This group are those that enter the system today. While our lecturers are living in droves, universities are busy being established, federal, state, and private. As I spoke today, you have one round, about 140 private universities who are going to lecture in them. And when you go to those universities, a large number of those who are there are adjunct. Go to the state university, we are having the same crisis. The federal, we are having crisis. And you are thinking of establishing new one. I want to appeal to this regime, to President um, Ahmed, to Nubu, to consider resolving all the past issues in the interest of the Nigerian children, in the interest of Nigeria as a country. During our last strike, a traditional ruler called me and said, President, do you know that Nigeria is giving more aid to America and Britain that they are giving to us? I said, that is not correct. He said, it's correct. I told me that Nigeria will spend their money to train doctors. They will live here and go and treat the British and American. Nigeria will spend money to train professors up to the level. They will go and teach in other country. Free of that, they will pay their air fair at free to those countries. That when you calculate this, what we give to these two countries is more than what they are giving to us. And when I did my own analysis, I find it was correct. We must stop this. And you must do that by treating your lecturers well. The president should forget this idea of our prerogative of mercy and what have you. Resolve all the past issues. Pay all the, the money due to the lecturer because we have done the job. You can go and check. We have done the job. Yeah. In the interest of Nigeria and Nigerian parents and children, I appeal to this regime to sort out all the backlog, look at the agreement we reached with the past regime, sign it that we attract not just our lecturers and Nigerian to Nigeria, to attract other lecturers from all over the world to Nigeria to teach. We have the environment. We have the brain. But our brains are lifting. And it's not good for our country. Thank you very much, Prof, for highlighting so many issues. I thought I would be a lecturer at some point in my life, but I ran away. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.